Uh, here to comment on the news of the day, we're going to bring in Corey Lewandowski, former Trump campaign manager and spokesperson and senior advisor for America First Action. Corey, happy Thanksgiving. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, I opened up my uh, failing New York Times, of course, top right column. If you turn it to the what the president calls the fake news network, CNN, right now, they're wall to wall on the fact that Michael Flynn has potentially cut off interaction with Trump, with, with the president's lawyers, which could be a signal that he's cooperating with prosecutors or negotiating a deal. Is the end nigh, Corey? Are, are, is, it, is the whole Russian collusion thing about to come crumbling down on Michael Flynn? and this White House? Well, you know, as you guys know, this is a narrative that the mainstream media has wanted to perpetuate for the last year. And what the bottom line is, is if Michael Flynn did something wrong by not disclosing the relationships he had with Turkey and other governments, then he should be held accountable for that. Now, I don't think this goes anywhere other than to Michael Flynn and potentially his son. But what we've seen is the people who haven't followed the rules, people like Paul Manafort, you know, uh, Rick Gates, Mike Flynn, if they have done something wrong, they should be held accountable. But that's where it ends, because there is no culpability or liability to the president because he didn't collude, cooperate, or coordinate with Russia in any way, shape, or form. Corey, let me push you just a little bit, though. This story won't go away. This news is significant insofar as it certainly suggests that a deal has been cut. It's going to be talked about, certainly, by those in the media that are not fans of the president. Does this create a new problem as the president tries to pull tax reform and other initiatives across the finish line before the end of the year? Well, look, tax reform is the administration's priority right now, but let's be clear about this. The media wants to talk about what Mike Flynn did wrong, and if Mike Flynn did do something wrong, he should be held accountable. Now, look, Mike's not a bad guy. He served his country with distinction for a long time. Mm -hmm. But if he didn't fill out the paperwork properly, and he didn't disclose that information, and he wasn't honest with the FBI like anybody else, he should be held accountable. But that's where it stops. And there has never been any, any indication that the President of the United States or anyone else within that circle of the President of the United States has done anything wrong. And so if Mike Flynn did something wrong, he should be held accountable. All right, Corey, uh, shifting gears here, it is not just the day after Thanksgiving. It is Black Friday. There are a lot of people out there spending money. I'm sure we'll get the numbers on how the economy looks and how spending went today uh, soon enough. Uh, but the big question, are you better off this year than you were last year? <gasps> Senator Bernie Sanders uh, does not think so. He had this Thanksgiving message. Take a listen. I don't have to tell anybody uh, that from a political point of view, this has been a horrendous year. It appears that almost every day there is something coming out of the White House that is embarrassing, that is destructive, that is horrific. And Corey, is it your sense that uh, the center's not feeling the burn anymore? <laughs> Well, look, the only people who are not better off today than they were a year ago is probably Bernie's wife, who's under investigation for this whole college fiasco up there in Vermont. We know that. But other than that, look, the American people, what we know is your 401k is higher today. Six trillion dollars in stock market value. The Dow Jones and the S&P 500 have hit records time and time again. Unemployment in this country is the lowest it's literally been in a lifetime. In 13 states, it's the lowest it's been since, you know, the 1970s. So when you look at the metrics of what this president has done, he's putting people back to work. He's bringing manufacturing back. You look at any measure that is actually achievable, and this president is better. The people of the country are better off today than they were a year ago because of this administration. Well, one issue this White House has taken on. Um, from the beginning, a very important and critical topic. Well, I, I don't mean to make light of it. We're making light of it this morning, but the president has emphasized we're going to call, not it's not the holidays, it's Merry Christmas, right? We're going to say Merry Christmas. We're not going to bow to political correctness. Um, but And I feel like part of that is probably a traditional Christmas tree, which we saw them put up. But there's a new fad, Corey. We've got to get your in insight on this. <laughs> uh, the upside-down Christmas tree, you can buy it for a cool grand uh, at Target in this particular screenshot. I don't know if, I don't know if they're limited supply or what, but or that special. Um, the upside-down Christmas tree, Corey, America's burning to know what does Corey Lewandowski think of the implications of such a fad? You know, I don't even know what it means to have an upside-down Christmas tree. It's like an upside-down world. It's, it's like Seinfeld. It's like the bizarro world. Like you can be a U.S. senator after groping people on you know, a picture and no one has any accountability for it. That's what the upside-down Christmas tree means to me. I mean, it's, it's everything that is wrong. Look, we have traditions in our country that many people respect, that we should respect, that we've passed on to our children. Look, a Christmas tree is one of those traditions. And if you don't want to participate in Christmas or Hanukkah, whatever your holiday is, you don't have to. But I don't even know what an upside-down Christmas tree means. That is a hardline stance, I think. Very that, strong. That is true. <laughs> Corey, can we put you on true. record that you will uh, inform us immediately if you learn that the first family is turning their Christmas tree upside down? <laughs> 
I, I can be sure that the first family will not be turning their Christmas tree upside down. They love you, this country I and think, our tradition. I think the Russians might like upside down Christmas trees. I'm just saying. They I don't know. May. Maybe collusion? There's I'm not sure. There's folks out there relieved it's not being called an upside down holiday tree. That's so. true. That's true. <laughs> Time to investigate. Thank well, you, Corey. True, true. Have a great Black Friday. Thank really you very much. Target him by okay. your upside down Christmas tree. Appreciate it. Former Democratic presidential candidate Martin O'Malley says that the Democratic Party is regenerating itself like after a bad forest fire, telling The Hill, quote, this is the turning point, not 2020. I'm very excited about 2018. I see this party regenerating itself, not from Washington. I don't believe in permanent blue states or red states. I don't believe in flyover states. O'Malley has now launched a new political organization to focus on these local elections. Joining me now, former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley. Governor, thanks for joining us this morning. So every thank you. Happy you, Thanksgiving. Happy, happy Thanksgiving to you, sir, and happy Black Friday as well. Uh, after every for every forest fire is started for a reason. Uh, it's either arson, it's intentional, or it's accidental. When you look at the forest fire of the Democratic Party that you say is being regenerated. What's the nexus of that? Is it, is it Barack Obama? Is it Hillary Clinton? What are you recovering from? Well, we stopped acting like a party. I mean, we, we, we kidded ourselves into believing that the only offices that mattered were President of the United States or United States Senate. There were many uh, so-called active Democrats that I would speak with on the phone trying to impress upon them when I was chair of the Democratic Governors Association that states matter. And many of these Democratic contributors, donors, active people would sometimes say to me almost proudly, oh, Martin, I don't do governors. I only do president and U.S. Senate. Well, look, we have to field candidates for governor, uh, good men and women up and down the ballot for state Senate and state rep, because mm -hmm. the truth is we were wiped out. We lost more governor's races and more state legislatures and local elections than at any time in the eight-year period of the Democratic Party. And shame on us. We need to act like a party. We need to realize every state matters. And that's what I'm going to be putting my shoulder into. Well, in some ways, Governor, the Republican Party was guilty of the same sin, being complacent about these middle-class uh, flyover state voters, blue-collar voters who've been left behind by both parties, this, this so-called forgotten man that this president reached out to. What is, what is your message? What's the Democratic message? Because there's a lot of talk of, say, economic justice or resisting President Trump. But what is the message to these working class voters to say, hey, don't side with this president who, who, is, who is, says he's working for you. Instead, side with us. What's the message? Look, the message is opportunity for all. I think it was Teddy Roosevelt who said that, that, that freedom in the United States of America means to be included both socially and economically in the life of our our country. Without that inclusion of all people, uh, our country doesn't have much of a reason for being. Well, what does and that right mean, now, Governor? I don't know. Opportunity a, for all. What does that mean? It means being able to send our kids to college without bankrupting our families. It means being able to be rewarded for hard work instead of watching our wages go down. It means, uh, it means a, a government that's actually investing in our country rather than bankrupting our country, as this latest tax so-called reform would do. It means all of these things that our parents and grandparents understood give our children more opportunities than what we have had. Look, this isn't rocket science, but it is the proper practice of American capitalism, which means that the more our people earn, the more they spend, the more our economy grows. And when we make our country stronger, our country can actually give back more to our children and grandchildren. Governor, and it's a message. Yes, it's good. To, you know, it's good to hear Democrats using the word capitalism because you hear a lot of Democrats, whether it's socialism or democratic socialism, you know, critiquing this president's tax reform bill, saying uh, that it's a tax break for the rich. When you actually look at the details, the rich in many places and a lot of places get hit harder than anybody else. There is tax relief for others. Corporate tax rate should bring jobs back here, which Democrats say they want to do as well. So there's, is there nothing in this tax reform bill that would lead to higher wages, that would lead to giving money back to people so they can spend that money, that would relieve to, relief to middle class voters? Would you not acknowledge at least that the motives of this president and Republicans are to help working class voters as well? I, I can't speak to their motives, but I can, in answer to your question, no. There's None. nothing in this tax reform that does anything for job creation. Tax. Look, man, if doubling the standard taxes deduction for wealthy and for corporations, doubling the standard deduction, child tax credits. I mean, 
Yeah, that'd be nice, but it's not worth bankrupting our country. Look, if tax cuts for the wealthy and corporations created jobs and better wages, we'd really be rolling in it now, wouldn't we? But it doesn't work like that. That's not how American capitalism works. We have the highest corporate tax rate in the world, You can't bankrupt your country and create more opportunities for your kids. Yeah, we've come out of the recession, thanks to President Obama's leadership, faster than most other countries. But we have yet to see wages go up again for most Americans. And a lot of people, have, who, if they have less than a college degree, haven't seen any jobs Because so back. many of those jobs so have gone overseas, challenge. Governor. You would acknowledge that so many of those jobs have gone, gone overseas. I mean, uh, it, you, we, we've seen it happen over generations. Would not reducing the corporate tax rate, rather than trying to line people's pockets, you would have to acknowledge base economics would say incentives would be for companies to come back here and provide those jobs here. Is that not good for flyover states, as you said you don't want to describe them, to have those jobs coming back? Isn't that a basic premise? Yeah, but look, you assume, you assume that they're paying taxes now under our tax code. That's not... That's not true. You know, GE, G, I think, uh, last year paid nothing. Because the code is in, so complex. You have to simplify the code as well, yeah, Governor. Yeah. You'd have to acknowledge look, that. Here's, look, here's what I believe. I believe that, yes, if we had a fairer code and people actually paid their fair share, that would be, that would be better. But would, what is absolutely bad for our country would be to bankrupt our country with a $1.5 trillion uh, added to uh, our debt that this bill doesn't even pay for. Look, the real challenge is how do we get wages and pay to start going up again with productivity in the United States? That's what makes capitalism sure. actually work, Go when more people are included. Some may see it's a bit, bit cynical for the Democrats now to be talking about debt and deficits after eight years of Obama. Speaking of cynicism, Governor, I'll, I'll let you get the last word. You're starting this PAC. You're going around the country. Are we looking at the beginnings of a 2020 presidential bid? Look, I'm, I'm going to be putting my shoulders into helping people win all across the country. Let me give you one quick example. In Oklahoma, in the last seven special elections in Oklahoma, a state Donald Trump won by overwhelming margins. Our candidates have won five of those seven races, uh, flipping uh, seats in many instances that people thought we had no chance of winning. But it's not just Oklahoma. It's New Hampshire. It's Iowa. It's South Florida. It's Washington State. So I'm putting my shoulder into helping good people. People win back their state so we can save our country. And I'll make well, a decision about 2020 later. After the midterms is what I've heard. Governor, thanks for, for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you. You thanks got it. Happy Thanksgiving.